this is a, a really hard skill to teach. Um, the first part of it is knowing and understanding what are the three components or what are the components to playing good downfield defense. And to me, it's three things. Uh, well, it's really two things. And then the third thing is being able to combine those two things. The first thing is the physical fundamentals that you need to be able to do in order to execute, execute good downfield defense. And specifically, we're talking about footwork and, and body, you know, your physical body positioning. So you're talking about how do you change directions when you're um, positioning yourself against the defender? How do you, um, you know, what does that, what does that foot pattern look like? How do you rep that foot pattern? Uh, a lot of times we refer to this as a drop step. And there's, there's rise up videos that you can, you can check out to, um, to look at how to do that. Uh, it's in season seven, critical fundamentals. If you look at the defensive footwork, uh, it's in there. Um, so that's, that's the footwork part of it. You have to be able to do that. The other part of it is you have to understand where should you be positioned relative to where the disc is and where your person is. So if we're on the field here, and this is a drill that I'm gonna explain later, if we're, if we're on the field here, the disc is here, the mark is taking away this side of the field, well then, you know, this is the open side of the field, and so the defender should be placing themselves between their, their offensive player, so we're talking about this defensive player, they should be putting themselves between their offensive player and the open side of the field. So somewhere on this side, maybe they're playing here, maybe they're playing here. So that's the skill number two, is knowing where you should be and why and what you're taking away, okay? So, got to know your fundamentals, footwork, you got to know where you got to be, but it's a totally different ball game once that def that offensive player starts moving. So the way I like to do it is first I teach uh, the positioning where you have to be and I just sort of show it. I might show it on a whiteboard, I might just show it with a couple of players. I just sort of show and I explain why that I might do that. Then I teach them uh, I teach the footwork of what it's like. So what I've got here is a drill that I actually do. I call this drill stop the under because that's something that I say a lot uh, as a coach and so my drill is called that. So when we're doing this, um, you know, the first couple iterations are just to learn the footwork. So we'll have the offensive player run a scripted cut and notice these cones are, um, these, are these, these dots are cones. Uh, those those cones are in a an unpredictable pattern, but they're in a pattern that at least mimics partially what a cutter might do and the angles a cutter might take. So um, the offensive player runs that script and the defensive player practices staying on the correct side um, and doing the appropriate footwork. And that, that footwork is for another day. So that's how we start. We teach them that. We, we go 50% speed, then we go 75% speed, then we go... 100% speed and we're looking for the correct footwork. But the best and most important layer of the drill comes when we say, okay, as an offensive player, after you've maybe after you've gone to one cone at any time, you can break the pattern and try to win a race to the underneath space or the the under uh, the what we call the stop the under space. So the drill instead of becoming this script, it becomes just you know one cone or maybe no cones that they have to do it's still this same amount of space 20 meters by 20 meters because that's i don't know the lane that we decided we need to defend against and now this person gets to practice against a, an offensive player who's doing some mixture of the movements that they just practiced in a scripted form but it's unscripted and it's a very clear, like, did I do my job well or not? If at any time the offensive player can win a race to the underneath space before uh, the defender, then that's like an obvious, I didn't do my job or I, I lost, you know, I lost the rep or I was not successful. So your goal is then to have players understand and get active reps and, and live um, unpredictable reps against uh, an offensive player where they're 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 practicing and thinking about how much buffer do I need to actually give them in order to be able to protect 
that underneath space and keep my body positioned there. So what you start to see is you see players, as they get closer to the line, you want them really close. And as they get farther away from the line, the buffer gets a little bigger. So that's what we call this skill of maintaining the appropriate buffer. Okay? And that maintaining the appropriate Pro, the appropriate buffer is a really tough skill, especially for new players. They're like, why do I have to maintain a buffer? Why don't I just stay the same? What, like, players are always asking, like, what's the right distance I should uh, be from my person? And that's when you, you have to teach them, like, it depends. It depends on a lot of different things, where your offensive player is, who the thrower is, where they are on the field, the wind condition, it depends on all those things. And this is one small um, sort of, you know, concise way to get them thinking about where they have to be and why and what it means to be successful as a defender. So um, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get some you're gonna get some players who like very obviously that once the offensive player starts doing what they want, they just get really beat and their offensive player wins. And that is an opportunity. That's a teaching opportunity to say, okay, let's give them a little more buffer rather than starting tight, why don't you start a little looser? Or maybe you want to start a little closer to that underneath space. Um, so that's a, that's a basic drill that I use uh, to teach how to teach players how to maintain a defensive buffer between their player. Um, you could switch the drill. You could you could say, okay, now we're going to protect the deep space. You could switch the drill to, drill to saying, hey, now we're going to protect this space. You could have the thrower. Um, you could switch the mark, so now the mark is actually over here, and th the lane has changed, so maybe uh, the defensive player has to orbit. There's tons of things you can do with this drill. It's up to you to decide what your players actually need. But in the end, it's always going to come down to, did you teach them the physical fundamentals to, to do the footwork right? Do they understand what they're taking away in terms of their positioning, and then give them lots of unpredictable reps where they get to practice and have an obvious conclusion of whether or not they were successful while they are trying to maintain that appropriate buffer or not.